Hi guys, this is Prios, and yeah, we will pick up where we left last time. Yeah, reviewing the PLO session on GG with all these big names. So let's restart and see the next one. I guess the ace, queen, queen, nine wants some action and will re raise now. Yeah, that's the case. I hate these limbs. So again, something I don't like that much about Ben Tolerini's game. Uh, I missed the action now, and uh, let's. Um, oh no, I think I. Where's the queen queen thing? Okay, so I think he bet and then get called and. On the turn it was bad call again. Um, I don't like it, I think. Um, yeah, this is... Did he lead the flop or... Was he just check calling? Okay, that's bad. Um, I think if he's betting three-way, you probably don't have enough equity. I mean, you do fine against hands like aces, but yeah, against queens, you don't go do very well. And yeah, also um, like flush draws crush you and stuff. So yeah, um, I guess that's a flop fold. And the set takes it down. Let's jump into the next big one. Uh, how do we do this? By the way, thanks for to BCP Poker Replays that he made these very great content and that we now have a stream well, um, to talk about these amazing action. Um, don't like the small open race at all. I mean, it should be at least 3.5 big points or something. Mm, what do I think about the re-race? That's a very good question. I think it's debatable. The cold, cold call is, is complete. This is really bad. Um, he should not do this, this ever. Um, let's come up with a similar situation. Um, this is probably borderline and on the edge and yeah. You could do it and you could also not do it probably. So let's see. I think this is comparable, like 50 BB and he's in the small blind. Although, yeah, uh, not sure. Let's see. Can also um, check for middle position later. 8, 5, 7, 6. So. Mm, this should not be re raising, as you can see. Um, the Sim didn't converge yet, but it's closer to call. And yeah, I guess this will definitely be just a call when you change positions a bit. And that reflects the action on the table a bit better. I mean, he even has one more guy behind to act. So yeah, I guess this should just be called and not be re-raised. But yeah, I understand him. Um, I sometimes also cannot hold myself when I see such a beautiful hand, even with um, short stacked. So yeah, I mean, I don't blame him too much, but yeah, it's, it's a small mistake. Ace, queen, eight, three is a bigger mistake. Yeah, ace is now very happily get it in. And yeah, I guess the other two will get it in too. And yeah, can't brief will be in a terrible spot. And yeah, 
I don't feel bad for him at all because he played it bad and he deserves to get punished. Hundred percent must be nice. Hundred sixty k pot having hundred percent on the flop. Very nice one. Okay, here yeah, again we got whole cards, so this might be an interesting spot. Let's look into it. Um, I don't like the limp. I would play a strategy where I raise or fold. Uh, limping is only an option uh, if in the blinds, and he's not in the blinds. Yeah, he flopped quite well, but still decided to check. Oh, uh, sorry, he did not check. I would be very surprised if he uh, did check in position. Yeah, I guess now against the shorty, what would I do? Um, can't go too wrong. Uh, I guess he has to get it in. Uh, he could also just call, wait for a safe turn. And yeah, that's a very safe turn. He now won all the time. He could even just call against a small bet. Um, I mean, you don't want to chase out um, bluffs. Oh, that's very unlucky. Yeah, he still has to call river. Yeah, whatever happens now, the money will go, go in all the time. Yeah, he got one out out, but yeah, what what can you do? Uh, he played it played it well. Besides uh, limping pre flop. Yeah, that's a good race size. At least a better one than most of the other guys use. I think uh, seven seven six nine. Could be a fold. Um, it's definitely close. Um, how do we do this properly? Let's check. Um, okay, that's the wrong program. We need the poker trainer. We let's check for two different positions. And yeah, we also let's check for the button first because if this already is not a defend, then we. Don't need to look into it from middle position. I mean, it's a mix between the two. Because, yeah, this is a straddle pot, and yeah, we don't have sims for that. But, yeah, let's try to do our best to come up with a situation um, at least remotely similar to this one. And, yeah, only if double suited you can consider defending. And he's not double suited, so. And this is already from the button. This is, can also be treated as an MP open. So, yeah, I mean, it, there's a bit more that money in, but I think it's not enough. You should not play the sand. Yeah, and now he might get into trouble. I mean, I guess once he get to the flop. I can't blame him too much for check raising, but yeah, you, you could also just call flop. I mean, your hand, hand is not very, uh, has no, no nuttiness, or at least not much, and yeah. I wouldn't mind if he just check call flop. But yeah, given the stack sizes and assuming that he still has some full equity, I don't mind his play. By the way, um, I, as I said, I like uh, calling the flop only a lot better and then he could have donk shoved this uh, turn. Um, he picked up a lot of equity against most, hand, most hands and now um, hence can get scared that would have not folded on the flop. So yeah, that's why you just um, call flop sometimes. And he wins anyway, so yeah, quite lucky. Mm. 
Let's go to the next big pot. Big hands, so probably a few in a row. That's a close one. I'm not sure if this should open race. I can't blame him too much. Uh, I wonder what he should do now. Um, oh, I guess what's the stack size? Uh, yeah, it's something between 50 and 100 big blinds. Uh, yeah, let's look into both. So, go to fold, raise, re raise, download. For 50 big blinds, this might be a fold, and for 100 big blinds, it's most likely a call, I would assume. Suited. Okay, it's already a call for 50 BB, so for 100 BB it has to be a call too. The re raise I, I, I like. Um, this looks like an action flop, they probably will get it in. Yeah, not much to do here given the pot to stack ratio, and yeah, the Jacks got very lucky with this flop. And yeah, we also um, managed to hold. Mm, what do I think about the... I think I don't like his limp. Uh, true, I don't want to get re-raised, but I also don't want to play a pot against two people and yeah by when you block an ace a jack and a king it's quite likely that you can take it down preflop so i prefer a race i'm not sure what gto says here it's it's a personal prefer, prefer personal preference yeah let's see how things develop okay This screams trouble. Uh, he bets very small. Uh, I would pref prefer a slightly bigger bet of like one third post pot. Well, that's kind of tough. Um, question is um, do we want to re raise or are we just calling? I would assume that we are often ahead still yeah i don't mind either um it would really suck if we three bet and then get four bet so i guess i slightly prefer calling Oh, this is, all, this is also a card that looks very safe for him. Oh, here's my, here are my drinks. Uh. On the turn, he could again uh, consider to raise or just call. That's a red, an action river for sure. Yeah, now he definitely has to raise big. Trying to get paid off by Ace King or another full house. I mean, it would be unlucky to run into sevens, but yeah, I would play it the same. Mm -hmm. 
with I agree with the preflop action in this hand. <laughs> Flop in James Park shoes I probably check in order to check call. In turn I would definitely check. At least calling one bet. Okay. When no bet gets in, what is our best course of action on the river? <clears throat> I like either a small bet, like one third pot trying to get called by worse trades or um, two pairs and stuff. Uh, check calling river also is fine. I mean, true teller can have peeled flop light against the small bet and now might turn something into a bluff. But I guess I like a small sized bet a bit more like one third pot uh, trying to get paid. And this also has another positive effect. You don't have to call a big bet from your opponent. Mm, yeah, I mean, you, if, um, if you check call, uh, check call when he might bet big, like pot of three quarters, and you don't really want to uh, want to um, yeah pay better. You, that big price and if you bet uh, one third only you can I think um, after it got check check on the turn you will almost know yeah not never but you will very rarely face a race and yeah that's why um, this control controls controls the pot a bit better and yeah makes it also easy to get paid from worse because he has to defend a wide range um, against a small river bet so yeah I, I, I very like how he played it, and yeah, he gets paid. Oh, it's heads up now. And yeah, we need to uh, find the next big pot. Three way big pots. Did we already looked into it? I, I think so. Typical Rex, or typical Rex, okay. What are the typical Rex doing? That's annoying, I mean, if you, if you want to see cards, so typical Rex is, oh, no, let's not uh, watch this. Three-way big pots, this sounds good. Uh, looks like we can rewind a bit back. And a bit more. Okay, so we got a race. The race is to lose. Ben Tolarini, I don't like his uh, preflop game plan. Um, we also don't like uh, True Teller's call. Um, I also I don't like the play of any of these guys. Uh, only P. Le Francis, um, yeah, should I, I, I like only from him? I like the action. I mean, this still is somewhat okay, but yeah, I think you should not appeal uh, with Kurt's nets of sand. And yeah, captain, the captain should not get involved. I mean. This hand uh, plays terrible against that many opponents in a multiway pot, so yeah. I mean, he gets a great prize, but I still think it's not worth it. I don't expect much action on this card. Probably will get checked through again. Yeah, probably a pot that uh, will get checked down. And yeah, in the end, 
Ben Tolarini will take it down. I don't like this limping game. Yeah, but it is less bad than on regular tables because you have huge antis in the pot and yeah some of the guys are also shallow and yeah so you with that um, with uh, taking this line you control the size of the pot and your hand isn't that bad so yeah but yeah we are again involved in a big pot um not sure if i agree with the sizing uh my standard would be to bet half pot. Uh, yeah. Um, ben now has to call with the top pair and the gut shot. And yeah, let's see if he will continue to bluff on the turn. This is also a quite interesting spot. Hmm. I want to take a deeper dive into spots close to this one. So let's make it 50 big blinds. Let's make it a three bad pot. And it is what is close to the situation yeah i think no 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 that's not good enough small blind versus utg is what we will pick and the board is ace eight uh, unfortunately the board is not available so we take this one instead let's see what sizing the solver uses um either small or very big and it's like 50 50 mix uh, between these two king king seven eight should probably bet big yeah it is indeed betting big But yeah, looks like at a stack depth like here, probably 33% is the better sizing. So let's let him still pick this sizing, although this is only be done with the very strong hand with two backdoor draws. But yeah, what can you do? He's 10, 9, 6, so his hands get his hand gets a little upgrade. Okay, he's not ace 10, 9, 6. We have to um change his hand a bit too. So it's like ace 10 8 5. Probably is not allowed to open this. So we might have a problem here. Wow. This is quite surprising. Um, the solver would get it in on the flop right away. With a gut shot and the weak ace. Anyways. Ben did just call and yeah um so it's like the let's make it an offshoot card to make it the queen is uh, the queen is fine so what is king king six seven now doing it's checking 
and only betting very occasionally. Um, I think the problem is when we give him a suit, um, he probably will have the flush draw too, so that's not too cool. Um, we might be able to. Hmm, no, blind with blind, practice with word. No, we cannot change suits here. Uh, yeah, so let's just see if we can find possibility to that he is not having a backdoor flush draw. So yeah, he should check with no backdoor flush draw and if he has uh, picked up the flush draw he should bet. That's a bit surprising honestly. Um, Hi, um, I personally would probably shove sometimes, but I should never do this in the world of the solver. So that might be another leak of mine. Um, what happens if you get shoved on? Yeah, as I thought. Um, and what? Once you check the king king six seven with the flash draw you also want to fold against the shove i would not do this for sure but i would also not check so i would not come into this situation ever but yeah interesting findings here uh, let's see what happens here I really like um, a check to see a check from Ben Torini. I guess. And he checks. That's sort of a tough river if he's getting uh, bet into. But given how the action went, he probably has to call. Do he has to call? Yeah, I guess he has to call. Um, yeah, his opponent could just have random stuff that is now um, trying to bluff after he showed weakness on like every street. So I, I like it. I also really like his check. Um, I in in game would bet often on the what was it on the on the turn, but yeah, I think um, checking back is a way. Um, Superior line. Um, don't like the limp. Um, not sure if we should raise or fold. Uh, let's compare this to a normal sim with short stacks. Mm, but keep in mind that you can be loser than this because. There's a lot more dead money into the pot when uh, in normal situations. I'm also not sure if these guys ran any sims or if they just if they just decide on their own that uh, limping is a good strategy. I mean, this for sure this hand is is a hand that is probably not losing much money or maybe it's not losing at all when limp called and yeah this hand sucks a lot if when you race and get re-raised so yeah I, I i don't hate it and yeah also not sure um what the gto plays with hands like this given uh that three blinds are in there and also an anti I don't like that he is who was the one uh, putting the race in uh, so it's him he, he did and we don't know his hand yeah and yeah so far um, yeah I think the captain what should the captain do the captain should probably just fold his hand just sucks 
And yeah, it's quite likely with uh, how these guys play that he will see a race after later. Although, I mean, how bad is it when he got so got a got a race into you now? I mean, he definitely has to shove once a race gets in because he might still have some fold equity. But yeah, I, I I just hate his hand and it's not doing good against the racing range. So he. Yeah, I would just uh, have fooled a preflop with the queens and I don't mind this complete and yeah, we don't know his hand so we can't judge on his play. Yeah, a true teller's call is fine. Uh, Captain Habu, I think um, it's probably the best line from Captain once he uh, plays like this to shove. Uh, although when you shove you still want some full equity and you probably don't have it against these guys so shoving is probably not an option but yeah you should not get involved preflop anyways and if you avoided this you would not have to get it in now and yeah with, with an overpair and a gadget he now definitely is priced in but yeah the 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 problem started with preflop and if he would have stayed out he could have avoided these this spot um completely um he's leading for full pot um i mean he has a very strong hand you should have some strong stuff in your leading range for sure <laughs> Do I want to have this hand in there is the question. We also don't want the flop to get checked through, I guess. Although it's not the end of the world if it happens, to be honest. So yeah, I guess I slightly prefer a check because Captain will probably get it in with any pair, gut shots, open enders and all these stuff because he has almost no money left and then can't brief us in a tough spot and yeah. Did, does it, let's think about it, does it look stronger and do you get more money um, by just potting into the field? Is this looking stronger or weaker? Yeah, it probably doesn't matter that much as long as you don't fold. Um, yeah, I'm okay with this. I would also be okay with checking. I guess mix it, mix between the two. Worst hand wins the pot. Uh, I would prefer a slightly larger preflop race with the kings. Wet's kind of tough with the King, Queen, Jack, 10. Poor. Let's... Uh, how deep are these guys? Is it more like 50 or more like 100 big blinds? Well, it's, it's closer to 50, so... I mean, keep in mind, it's not 100% comparable, but you know, yeah, I mean, that's all we got uh, back. So it's a re-raise, he folds, and now he can decide. And this might be a fold still, although, I mean, it's very hard to resist um, playing this and and given that these guys play 
loser than they should. Um, I would probably also cold call, but what is GTO thinking? Yeah, GTO also wants to cold call. So yeah, perfectly done. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. What, what what should the kings now do? So he calls and it's on the kings. Should the kings call or should the kings just get it in? I slightly prefer calling um, unless the the big uh, the the button is very active and yeah. The button is Kurt, how is it called? I guess we can uh, find out. Uh, Matt Kirk, you know. Uh, Matt Kirk is his name. Yeah, I think um, as Matt Kirk is quite active, I would get it in. But against more needy opponents, I prefer just to call. And. It looks like um, the solver wants to get it in with the this end, although yeah, uh, although yeah, it, it's it's not that happy, but yeah, it's still okayish to get it in. So yeah, King King should get in according to Solver, according to me too. So let's see what King King will do here. I'm also um also can't wait. Oh, we cannot see the preflop equities, but yeah, I guess. King Queen 10 Jack has the worst hand by far. But seeing the flop now, King King is in trouble. But yeah, I, can't, I cannot fold anymore for sure. And yeah, the Canadian takes it down. <laughs> oh. mm, he's limping again. I don't like this. Um. This complete, yeah, I guess it's okay-ish when after he limps. And I like the re-raise with the queens. Does Ben Tolarini has a limp folding range? I guess not. Oh, he has. Sick. And yeah, I guess now the money will go in. I wouldn't mind if uh, Le Francois, or however it's his name is, uh, would donk flop. Oh, he lost his connection. Seems like Russia is not having the best internet. And yeah, you should get the best internet connection possible if you play for 100,000 a hand. But I guess he will be back in time. Yeah, he is. And what is he gonna do? I guess potting. Yeah, so. He has a top pair blocker. He has a back to straight. Yeah, there's already a lot in the pot. So yeah, you can't blame him. And he gets it in behind. But yeah, yeah he, I think he played it fine. And he, they run it three times. And True Teller wins two of the three. Uh, so I 
guess this one is the next one to watch. Oh no, we did already, so we are here. Big action, they promise us. Mm, don't like it. I think the ace, queen, queen, ten should put in the three bed. And what happened to them? I missed it, so he should re raise, in my opinion. But he don't. And now he is re raising. He could have pushed him out in the first place. So, yeah, now it sucks. It really sucks, but. What about. I. I don't hate if he um, four bets and falls to a five bet. Yeah, but I also don't mind just calling. I guess he will call. Yeah, he does. Uh, okay, that's a tough one. Cause yeah. It's easy to not be good with your overpair and just have two outs, but yeah, against uh, when you get this good of a price, you have to call at least once. And yeah, now you are in real trouble if you face another bet. Okay, he's checking. Is this line solver approved? Uh, let's find out. Uh, Pure trainer is not the program of our choice here. We have to do it with vision. We also got to um, uh, what situation are we gonna uh, going to assume? Small blind versus big blind. Not sure if this is uh, going to work out. So it's a paired board. Paired board. That's not ours. But yeah, 664 six, and 446 four, is close enough. And we, we are the bigger for the stack ratio. So let's reload it. And get the proper positions in. And finally, we should be good to go. Should you have any ace, queen, queen, ten in this position? Okay, we are lucky he still can. Um, so he should check it. And yeah, I also don't like the bet sizing at all. Um, this has to be one third and not such a big sizing. H queen queen ten should check by the way if he would have it. Well, let's uh, let's also put him his his end and see what he's supposed to do. Uh, Ace five seven eight. I think betting most likely, yeah, he is betting most of the time, and yeah, so that's definitely fine. And what is this hand now doing? It's calling, so so far I played it according to GTO. Um, a backdoor flush or get, gets in, but as no, oh, someone has it, so. We have to account for this, uh, so it's uh, nine. I guess the ace queen queen ten should check again. It does some uh, donking uh, with um, build around nut blocker and some flush draws, but yeah, in the hand it was a check. And what should the beautiful ace? Seven five eight now do. That's very tough one, um, in my opinion. 
but it looks like we should apply a lot of pressure if we get the if they have the nut flush draw unfortunately we don't so with lower flush draw we should bet some of the time but not always yeah so yeah it also was like it's, so it's an in-between hand but yeah i don't uh, mind his check i also wouldn't have minded if he bets so yeah it's, it's perfectly fine whatever you do and that's also the opinion of the solver um yeah now can't request a check and yeah that's a very tough spot when he now will co get confronted with a bet christopher had definitely has oh wow what why the fuck is he betting himself is this like a very advanced play or is this just spewy i mean what is he trying to do I mean, for Christopher, it's like a, an absolute no-brainer. I would just call always. Um, yeah, so he played it fine. But why is can't breathe betting river? I, in his shoes, would, che would check for sure. And I might even fold to a bet, to be honest. If he bets river... Can it ever be a bet for value? I mean, from, from what is he trying to get called? From like jacks or tens or ace nine? Or is he trying to fold out aces and kings? Uh, I don't like it. I mean, he's even blocking an ace, so it's less likely that his, his opponent has aces. Yeah, I don't like it. He should not bet river for sure. Next one, uh, Sean Winter, hundred K pot. Okay, who is Sean Winter? Sean Winter is a guy who is. Raising non-qualified, oh, he's not raising, he's who is limping non-qualified hands, UTG, and then calling re-raises. So, yeah, that's bad. Christopher should also not get involved. So, another thing I don't like. So, but now Christopher has a very strong hand. And, yeah, now two people are qualified. Hmm... Definitely checking the the set on the flop. Okay, Christopher plays it according to GTO. I mean, GTO suggests to uh, play passive with most of your second uh, nuts straights, and that's what he is doing. Will Sean bet again? I. Would I bet again if I were sh if I am sh in Sean's shoes? Oh, that's a tough one. So how likely is it that we are beat? The sevens are unlikely. Queens could be in his range for sure. It's not unlikely that Queens call the flop with. Uh, he could still have straights, but not that many. Although 6-8 is not that unlikely. 3-7 uh, sort of is, but yeah. Given the flop action, we are less scared of 6-8 now. But, uh, but yeah, okay, let's... Let's be honest, 6-8 um, might wait for a safe turn before getting it in. So we cannot rule out this hand completely. He also chooses a weird sizing. I mean, 
Is it is this sizing what you want to bet here? Is a pot sizing better? What do you think, chat? Do we want to bet pot here or is it is half pot superior? I mean, I get the idea behind half pot. Maybe he's trying to induce light shafts and he also has some money left uh, on the river. But yeah. I... Is it better to try to protect from draws, by the way? I mean, with a pot size bet, he will uh, force out many stuff that is very weak. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine. You can find arguments for both a big and a small sizing. So big sizing, um, yeah, then uh, you protect better from draws. You get a lot of stuff to fold with good equity, like 7-6 with a flush draw. Um, what is the downs? Yeah, so that's... What is the upside of these small bets? Yeah, you, you keep a lot of stuff in, but yeah, you have to play guessing games on many rivers. Yeah, I guess I don't mind it. But yeah, I'm not sure if the smaller or bigger sizing is better here. Christopher now has enough. He thinks it's time to ship in his trade. Can't blame him for this. Um, I mean, he probably is not folding any draw anymore at this point. I mean, he could be unlucky and run into the better straight, but yeah, he could also be up against a set or some sort of draw. And yeah, so I guess he doesn't want to play any guessing games on most rivers. So yeah, I think his line is perfectly fine. And yeah, once he bets, it's probably correct to call it off. He could be up against a smaller set some of the time, or against some strong draws like two pair and a flush draw and stuff that is not finding a fold. So yeah, I, I, I don't mind it. And yeah, they split the pot. Very lucky for the set. Sean Winter again. Now he's qualified and will he race now or is he limping again now? But I like it so far. Mm, I think Christopher probably should not get involved. But it's definitely very close. Yeah, I mean, given the extra dead money in the pot. And it might be that. I, I mean, I don't know Sean Winter at all, but can't brief as a bit of a weaker player. I suppose so, yeah. This um, makes it maybe a call now. Uh, so I guess now we can assume that we are on 100 BB stacks. And yeah, it's race here. And like, who is calling? I think it's like him calling. And now. It's on the big blind deciding if to defend or not. This is definitely a close spot. Um, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, with the extra dead money and with a player in the pot who not completely knows what he's doing, uh, I guess I think I would call too. So against two competent opponents, this probably is not a defend anymore. Yeah, according to GTO, you should not defend it. But yeah, as, as already mentioned, the situation here is a, a bit different. So yeah, I don't uh, blame him for calling. Um, let's see. Um, in the scenario, we put up how bad it is to defend this end. Um, if you defend our hand double suited, it's like almost break even. And yeah, single suited, you lose some money, but yeah, I guess it's 
It's it's it's I it changed my mind. It's it's fine to, to play this end. And now checking is the standard. And is he betting now? I mean it makes sense. Uh, I think he should size up to like half pot or something. This seems a bit too small, yeah. I mean I don't like his hand at all, but yeah, given the extremely good price, uh I can't blame him at all for seeing another card. What now? Uh huh. Should the this hand bet or not? That's a tough one. I guess betting isn't too bad. To be honest, it would suck very badly if you get raised, but yeah, you are up against eight other cards in total and you want to protect your hand and you, I would assume in his um, spot that I'm good often, but he just checks and yeah, seems like he will win in the end. Oh, getting checked down, I guess, yeah. The king has no reason to bet. Oh wow. Can't breathe actually is the one winning this one. And he was setting up the trap. And setting up the trap on the river again. Yeah. Sick one. So he would have gotten shake raised and then you are in a terrible spot. So I don't know what I would have done. Uh, so if, you, if I get check raised, I've got an open end line week to pair. I guess you still have to fold, but it's very hard to, to, to make this later on. Oh, more three way action flops. Okay. I'll. Uh, yeah, I like his race. I l think he probably will call, and I don't. I'm not sure if I like his call. I guess not. Assistant is a bit too weak. Yeah, I don't like his call. Okay, I expect this to get checked through. Expecting a check through again. Yeah, and on the river it's probably just getting to show to show down and uh five five flash wins. Easy game. Yeah, I would have defend I wouldn't have defended, so I wouldn't have won this pot. Let's see if this will be a bigger pot. Um uh, yeah, I don't mind his defend. This now um is a bit strange. Oh, oh I missed what I had to sorry. This is not strange at all. Yeah, now he has to get it in. Yeah, completely standard. Yeah, it's it's just a cooler. I don't like his preflop open by the way. It's it's oh is it an open? I think okay, he just defended his big blind. This is already debatable, but yeah. Once we get to the flop, um nothing you can do. Carl Preef is making tons of money in this game as it seems. Um uh, <laughs> uh, not sure if I like his call. Yeah it's but it's not too bad, so yeah, I guess probably still okay. Um, I like the turn bet. Mm, yeah, I guess um, given that your hand is having so many non nutted outs, you, yeah, I don't mind the turn call. I guess that's standard, and yeah, on the river, you. Just hope to be good somehow. Uh, no real reason to bluff. Your hand still has some showdown value. 
uh, don't like uh, the complete with the deuce for nine ace. Uh, is this another one that will get checked down? I mean, I also don't like the complete with the deuces. I also don't like the turn check. I would have bet the turn. Uh, what would I do now? Just calling, I guess. I mean, there are, there are so many turns I don't like. Uh, once I check, I I say that check calling is the best thing you can do. And Ben agrees. And on the river, probably check call again. I mean, some some straight draws got there, but yeah, you can't be too scared after taking this line. And yeah, um, the Christopher makes two pair two, and yeah, decides that he has enough showdown value, and yeah, we get to showdown, and Ben wins. Nice end. Um, besides preflop, nothing to complain about. Uh, bomb pots. Okay, let's see what bomb pots are. Okay, like the open. Uh, the size could be a bit bigger, but other than, than that, I like it. Um, the three bed also is probably a GTO three uh, squeeze, so I like it. Uh, I don't like. And do I like it? Should the ace, king, king, jack get it in? Or is just calling the way to go? I think I prefer to get it in preflop. <laughs> let's look into this uh, so let's make it he raises to folds call and then a re-raise what should a double suit I definitely get it in um, now it's sort of close but I guess I still prefer getting it in slightly and the solver says that I should not get it in. Wants to call 100%. If he changed the position slightly, because cannot exactly put this situation in. Um, can I then get it in? Or is it still just a call? Now, yeah, this is undecided yet, um, but it looks to be closer to a call, but double suit, yeah, you should get it in. Um, this flop is so annoying. It's really annoying. Yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, I like the pot size bet, uh, um, but I think, yeah, I got to um, answer the door very quickly. Uh, we'll be back.
Okay. I'm back. Um, I think here are we got a few three way parts in here, but I have no clue how to find them. No clue at all. This is very close. So we need like, no idea, 38, 39% equity. If he has aces, we are doing very purely. And yeah, I guess he puts him on aces quite often when he just calls preflop. Oh, this is insane. Insanely tough spot. And even he's, if he's not having aces, this still looks like a flop where we are probably at, at best flipping. So. Let's just put him on like 6% and see how we will do. Yeah, and even with just 6%, but that's the top 6%, uh, we would just have 35%. So yeah, I guess it's a fold still. Yeah, it's, it's sad, but we got to fold. Um, yeah, Ben is not folding. And yeah, that's an expensive, Lesson to learn now. And he loses all three. Yeah, um, seems like this is the theme of the video. Ben is making a lot of mistakes. I mean, not huge ones, but still he should um, get his shit together I mean he's known for uh, to be one of the best players in the world but I don't this is not uh, I'm from this video judging from this footage it looks like he is a fish on the table he's also playing like very loose so yeah maybe he needs to get in the lab a bit more not just play poker um yeah after making the flop that big pre-flop i mean can he still check for this flop let's let's also rewind and get back to what pre-flop happened i was not playing close enough attention um so he's raising this is standard he should not defend uh anyways he is he should definitely defend uh i also like a call i mean you don't want to get it in pre-flop you want to see flop that's the flop you are looking for or a flop yeah, close to this again i would say this is close to check for it. But yeah, he, he might be on tilt already. But yeah, this is very close to check for it for sure. Um, clubs, hearts and spades. And let's just give these guys random hands like this and this guy in the big blind he also has like seven percent to twenty to thirty percent let's see how the kings are doing 
Yeah, and the kings are the worst hand on the flop. But with some additional fold equity. You yeah, this is close, I would say, but I wouldn't mind him check folding too. I mean, this is not just results orientated. I like that he has 4-4 uh, in his hand because this way he often has, if behind a lot, uh, uh, some additional outs because he often can hit a king and a 4. I mean, in this case, a 4 is not helpful, but in general, the 4 is often helpful. I guess the way he should play his hand is checking the flop and well now probably get it in against one and fold against two. This is what I would suggest him to do. But yeah, that's definitely close. I mean, I. If it's a mistake, it's not a big one. If he just pots, it means this way he's not giving away any free cards, and yeah, he just runs very uh, bad. Um, yeah, when he gets it in with five percent. Yeah, and the nines win. Uh, don't like the limp. Don't like although the limp from Can't Brief I like more, but yeah, okay. I mean, the double suited hand with a pair, it's it's not that bad. But again, it's like the he's he's playing quite loose and a bit too loose, from my understanding of the game. And yeah. Nobody has anything, that's why it's getting checked through and probably also getting checked through on the river and a pair of eights win if I see this correctly. Yeah, nobody has a queen, nobody has an ace, so a pair of eights is good. Uh, again, don't limp this hand, just fold. I mean, even now you are not happy at all. Okay, now you are happy because you have an overpair and two gut shots. At least I would be happy, but even now, I guess it's like a flip. I also don't like the race from Can't Breathe. You should, should just check his hand in the big blind or straddle or however the last blind should be called. Um, yeah. Now just get it in. Uh, standard from both on the flop. And we run it three times. And yeah, Ben only wins one of the three. <laughs> Oakley Donkley, nice nickname by the way. I like it. Um, I don't agree with the limp. The sand is a fold in my eyes. Um, yeah, I like a flop check behind. We have no pair and we want to strengthen our check, checking back range and we want to be able to have nut flushes in our range um, when we check back the flop. But yeah, he disagrees, he's betting. Yeah, okay. Once you get lucky, then it's better to bet the flop. Guess he now will bet again. You can't go too bad um, to bet the nuts. Yeah, James Park probably is not convinced yet. And yeah, on the river, he might talk himself into calling because yeah, he has a second nuts, he has three hearts. So yeah, can't blame him for calling here. He limp preflop. Does this mean his range is more screwed to the nut flush blocker or 
the night flush i i have no idea because i never limp and i don't know much about limping ranges yeah i think it's, uh, the plays from both are fine besides yeah besides pre-flop and i would have checked back the flop but yeah otherwise it's it's totally fine Yeah, just just unlucky and cooler for James. Um, I think you probably should not make the pot bigger with such a low rundown. Was it? Why are his? Uh, yeah, now the cards are back again. Um, like how both played it so far, yeah, and I guess now it's getting checked down, right? Yep, and Oakley Donkley is not winning. Yeah, well played by both. Oh, this hand looks nice. Um, the race is a bit small, but yeah, otherwise I agree with the action so far. I would also not re-raise the kings. And we are also very deep. We will get in huge trouble if we re-raise hands like this. Uh, I like the flop bet. Oh, kings will donk now. That's very interesting. I would just call and on the river. It's very sad if he bets again, which he does. But for getting this prize, I call and yeah. And lose. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you cannot avoid getting these great prize. Uh, I, do I like his turn dog? I mean, I'm undecided if I like this. Um, yeah, I like the race. I don't like the big blind defense. Um, I would love to see Can't Brief re-raise it. Re-raise this hand, but yeah, he did not. Uh, flop is getting checked through. Um, yeah, that's fine, I guess. Yeah, and he's now betting the full pot. Mm. Nobody showed any strength on the flop. We have a good draw. Yeah, it's, it's definitely fine to use the sizing. Yeah, Christopher now made to pair can be a head against the hand like queen jack king queen ace something something against all sort of draws so yeah calling is standard in him from for him too and should he call i guess um the rep probably should not call because yeah it's not to the nuts and he also has no flush draw so yeah i would fold if i were james but he is probably calling he is uh wow should you bluff river in can't breathe shoes so Matt Kirk should keep bluff river. Got called by two people. Nobody showed any strength on the flop. People can definitely have queen four. I don't think, think that James Park is having deuces of fours ever. Also no tens, but he can still have queens. Um, Christopher 
It's also unlikely to have a boat, I guess. We call it a race, so a four is not a hand that people often have in their range. What do people do with queens on the turn? I mean, I guess both could have queens, but they also might raise them some of the time on the turn, but not always. The big blind also defends to white all the time, so he probably, when someone has it, it's most likely the big blind. But yeah, James also showed a lot of strength by overcalling the flop. If you bluff, what cans are you trying to force out? Uh, like aces and kings, queen deuce, any queen, draws that randomly have you beat. Is there a way for your opponents to arrive on the river with just trips? I guess so, a hand like Ace, King, Jack, Four. Queen, King, Jack, Four. Yeah, so there are ways to arrive on the river for just a four. Four probably also. Is it four calling? Yeah, most likely. Although the hands I mentioned uh, have a boat, at least some of them, so. But yeah, if he has like an open end line of four or a wrap and a four, you could get through the river and have not and now have trips. Two pair could be counterfeit now. Queen ten is counterfeit. Is queen ten folding? Is queen deuce folding or is queen or can these hands also re bluff? Yeah, this seems very close. It's very hard to by just thinking about it if you should bluff or not. I mean, in this instance, it would have worked, but I mean, it would most likely have worked. Christopher might still um, be the hero and call, or um, be the hero and bluff because he's blocking full houses heavily. Very tough decision. I think it's okay to check into bed. Oasis. Um, I like the race. Would like to see a re-raise. Okay. Oh, this is an action club. Yeah. On the flop, not much to do in the shoes of any of these guys. And yeah, James Park wins both, but he has also the huge equity edge. Yeah, agree with the race. Agree with, do I agree with the call? The call seems okay. Uh, oh, yeah, getting such a good price. I mean, it's you, you could also just fold flop. Like, but he, he, does it make sense to already fold flop? I mean, it's three way, you got one more guy behind. It's definitely close, but yeah. So do whatever you want. Uh, turn you 
your hand improved a little bit. Oh, that's interesting that he's batting again. Why is he betting again? I think in Christopher's shoes I would have not bet turn again. Let's come up with a situation close to this one. So it's five four four. Uh, hmm. uh, okay, let's check this one in instead. Oh, this also is like bullshit, right? We have to change positions. Uh, from where is he raising? Ugh. Uh, was he raising? Mm, no, he had. He has a straddle, right? Are we playing with straddle still? I guess. So this is like big blind versus UTG. This is the one. Oh, man. So hard to set it up properly. Hope now we will be good to go. No, we are not. Finally, we did it. He should have a decent leading range, but probably not a percent. Uh, King Jack 5 6. Not sure if it's batting. Yeah, it is. So. He got this correct already. And wow. Let's not uh wrong hand. Mm, wow, this one is already folding some of the time. But yeah, seems reasonable to call when we got a bad back of flush draw. So we call and turn is a jack. Oh man, what's happening here? So turn is a jack. It also brings a flush draw, right? So it's like this one. We are checking. And he should bet. He should bet big. Mm hmm. What's what that's what he did. Yeah, on the river we don't have any sims anymore. Um checking in card brief spot makes sense, and I guess yeah Christopher should also check back. He can beat some random Jack X that somehow got to the turn, he can beat 
Uh, so not many draws called turn to be honest, but yeah, you could beat some draws. Um, are kings, queens, aces turning, uh, calling turn again? They might. So if he bets river, this would be to fold out over pairs. But yeah, not that many over pairs in this range. I guess it's perfectly fine to uh, assume that you have enough showdown value and not really a reason to bluff. So yeah, I, I like the river check from both. Yeah, okay. Looks okay-ish so far from everybody. King Deuce could check, could um, bet. Okay, then it's easy. Once we um, see a donk, then I would just call. I think I bet turn small and check back river. Um, when facing a pot size bet, I call. Yeah, so pretty standard. Um, you like the race and like that he defends it. And also like that he defends with just a call. Um, this looks a bit like an extra flop. Question is if he should check race or just just check call. Uh, I prefer check call and lead on a lot of turns. Mm. Let's again. Uh, this is UTG versus. Big blind again and check nine four. Okay, this one and ace queen ten three. Ace queen ten three. Okay. It looks like um this hand should donk a decent amount of the time. And what's... Mm, if this hand donks, um, I would get it in with this hand. Check queen, 10, 8. Yep. That's also what the server does. I mean, this hand can dominate a lot of draws. And what should the ace, 10, queen, four do now? Um, fold with no back doors and with two back backdoors call. So, yeah, reasonable, I think. Um, so once we check this hand, what do we do if confronted with a bet? Then we should just call. Okay. Well, let's move on to the turn. So now we got a flush draw. Does donking make sense? Or should we check again? Let's see. Um, I 
donking some flash blockers, as it seems, and very rarely also donking the night flash draw. But most of the time not. So it seems like a standard check. I mean, this is not really a scare card, so it's not changing that much. So yeah, I, I like a check. And yeah, if confronted with a bat, probably just call, right? Yeah. So it's a call. Well, let's see if he is doing something stupid and somehow decides to ship it in instead. I mean, you have no full liquidity, it makes no sense to ship it in. Okay, now it makes sense to ship it in. That's what he does, and he wins. Right, now both players win because they both made the same straight. Any, every pot is big, um, like it if he raises. Although I don't mind uh, limp from time to time. Uh, check calling flop, I guess. I like it. But check raise, I think uh, with hands like this, uh, if you have three spades, this is often utilized as a check raise. I, I like it, um, Yeah, especially given the small sizing. But he's just calling. I guess now he's check calling again. Sort of standard so far. Um, yeah, on the river. Checking is fine. Check raising would be a sick play. Not sure if I like it, but it at least makes some sense because once you face another bet, you're probably beat. Um, the question now is, will your opponent still fold? But I, I guess this is a decent range to use as a check risk bluff. Yeah, I'm not sure if you should check raise bluff. Uh, I mean, you could even just call and assume that you are sometimes good. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is qualified as a check raise because yeah, it's it's good so often. Even when a, your opponent bets, it might sometimes be good. Okay. No hold cards in this one, so let's jump to the next big spot. Rex can't breathe. Okay, whatever this means. Mm, so it probably means that Matt Kirk wins more. Let's see. Ugh. Ugh. What? What is this hand? Um. It's a race bet. I mean, played very nitty so far. Yeah, I guess you should raise. I say, raise it up. But yeah, this way he raised it up. That's interesting. I wouldn't have raised it up uh, facing a limp. I would just call. So four, five, six. So a pair and an open ender and a flush draw for Jacob Schindler. And a pair and an open ender as well for Can't Breathe. Hmm, that's a tough spot. I wonder if 
checking or betting is better. I like uh, check. You don't want to run into flush draw. You also don't want to get raised. So I like a check, but he disagrees. It can't be that bad to bet. I mean, the upside of this is that you might get out a lot of flush draws. And yeah, now Jacob has a flush draw, an open ender, and two pair, and can't breathe at the nuts. So this seems like a lot of money might be going in. Oh, he plays it very tricky. What should Jacob do? Should he bet? And if he bets, what size should he use? If if you bet, this is protection almost only, right? Or oh, does this bet would have any other purpose? You you don't uh, think that you can get caught by worth right and yeah you also don't necessarily want to get it in and you have a lot of outs on the river so i guess jacob should check or disconnect okay but he's back he's betting yeah, I, I think he should have checked. And yeah, now I think Cantbury should get it in because a lot of stuff now is committed and you have the nuts, so you want to get in money. Yeah, twice. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Jacob wins one. And yeah, I don't know why he can't breathe. He can breathe. Ending. What is ending? Is ending just the end? Okay, one more big hand as it seems. No, not really. Wow, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess this is it for the day. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly did. Um, nice to see that even the pros do and the, the big boys who play the high stakes make a lot of mistakes, at least in my eyes. Yeah. So, seems like nobody plays perfect. And even guys, I mean, the one who very stood out to make a lot of mistakes and to play to lose in like every sport was Ben Tolerance. And many people think that he's one of the best players overall. So, that's a quite interesting finding. Yeah. Um, S. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Until next time, good luck at the tables. Bye bye.